ok welcome to our uh, next lecture uh, we have discussed about the significance uh, of the cultural properties uh, from that uh, today we will discuss about the different approaches or divergent approaches for managing and rehabilitating the heritage properties um, we can also call it the degree of intervention because as you will see that it also when we are talking about how do we intervene in the cultural properties there is also degree because we have to talk about the minimum intervention anyway we will gradually come to that uh, we have in our last lecture discussed about understanding the significance and we also discussed uh, with the various case study and set example that before making decisions about the items and collection and structures and precincts we have to understand the significance and we have at length discuss about values and significance the process everything we also as uh, have mentioned in our introductory lecture that conservation means all the processes of looking after a place which has of course as a significant so as to retain its cultural significance so this is very important that to understand that there are many many ways they are divergent approach so there can be many ways many processes and also the major uh, objective or the main objective is to retain the cultural significance what we have discussed and these two are interrelated because one till and unless we understand the significance we cannot decide which process has to be adopted for a particular case so now today in our lecture we will discuss, discuss the various approaches and processes let us see one by one there may be the indirect conservation there may be preservation consolidation restoration adaptive reuse or rehabilitation reproduction reconstruction all of this all of these processes come under the broad umbrella of conservation so we will take one by one that what these term or each of this process signify first let us take the indirect conservation or prevention of deterioration it actually says that protecting cultural property by controlling its environment so if you have signify or understood the significance of a place or a cultural property it can be an artifact or can be a structure it can be a group of structures who so here what is being said that it has to the culture by controlling its environment preventing agents of decay and damage from becoming active there may be various various ways of that uh, a structure can be affected and so preventing the agents of decay and damage from becoming active and finally the sound maintenance procedure based on regular inspection and guidelines of conservation so as we can see that these words are to be understood and remembered very clearly so once we are talking about the environment we are talking about the agents of decay and damage we are also talking about the sound maintenance policy so let us see what all these mean so protecting cultural property by controlling his environment let us take an example of Udaigiri caves from Khandagiri hills in Bhubaneswar Orissa it is located here and uh, it is a very important site what is this importance will come gradually there are uh, two hills on the two sides of the road and there are many rock cut caves now in these caves one and all of the cave the Hatigumpa inscription is there and this inscription is absolutely important why is important because these inscriptions are done by Karavila who was the emperor of Kalinga in India during the second century BCE he was also responsible for the propagation of Jainism in East India if you look at the empire of the uh, Karavila it is a huge area because he is actually emperor Ashoka devastated and uh, then he sort of uh, built up his empire 
So, now what is the relationship of this empire caravilla and this inscription? Because this inscription, the Hatigumpa inscription is the one which talks about caravilla, his reign, his doings and everything and it was been deciphered and this is in one of the caves. And it has been uh, James Princess and many other historians actually try to understand and it gives a very important historical document. But now, where it is located? is very susceptible to damage because it is exposed to the environmental condition, water, uh, the sunlight, many many other causes which if it is kept there like that it cannot be maintained. So, what were the options which were available? One could have copied that and kept it like that, one could have removed the entire stone to a museum. But if you see that it, if we associate this inscription with the place, then it is best to keep the inscription in its original location. Now, keeping it in original location like just like that, it would not would not have been stayed very long. So, it was very important to protect it from the environmental condition without touching the inscription. And so, Archaeological Survey of India who is in charge of these sites, what they have done is they have done this external sort of an extension in a very compatible manner uh, with the stones similar type of sandstone and they have done it so that that inscription which is a very valuable historical document is kept in its place and is not damaged by the different condition. So, in this case what we see that the inscription is being protected without touching the inscription the what are the causes and the prevention has been taken like that. This is a quite a good example uh, why I say is good example because this is one of the example I think archaeological survey has done a very sensitive uh, manner the extension they have matched the material, but at the same time they have not tried to copy any original structure it is very clear that it is a new addi addition, but some sort of a sensitive approach has been adopted it is not always like that. This other example also there we have talked about an inscription these are the examples of the sculptures it is in Shantiniketan by Ram Kinkar Bej. Ram Kinkar Bej has a very interesting life he was the son of a barber a village boy and he came and he was noticed by um, the teachers there and Rabindranath Thakur adopted him uh, and brought him to the campus of Shantiniketan. He adopted means I said not as an adoption in the normal way, but I mean he was taken care of and he studied there and he became a sculptor, a renowned sculptor. Now, as we see the Indian sculptor and painter, he is one of the pioneers of the modern Indian sculpture and a key figure of the contextual modernism. So, now Ram Kikurbej what he did that because he was very innovative and he was experimenting with the material. So, when he was doing apart from his painting and other sculpture, when he built this series of sculpture here, he experimented other than the clay and the mud and other thing, he experimented with concrete. So, when he did a series of such sculptures which are kept outside, he experimented with concrete and the reinforcement was given by the iron rod. Now, being outside and there are many many of them like there are a statue of Buddha, there is a Santal family and there are lots of these all over the campus they are there. They are very important uh, artistically, aesthetically, historically and association with a great person a sculptor an artist like Ram Kinkar Bej. Now, the problem is that when they are exposed to the environment and uh, there are some cracks there and when there is a crack there is a seepage of the water and because of that the iron uh, 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 rods which are inside which he used as a sort of a support uh, that gets corroded and it burst and a uh, corrosion sort of expands. So, what would have been the best way to preserve that? There were been many many ways to do that one is that uh, to remove that in a, within in, in interior whether they would not be exposed to the uh, these such uh, environmental condition or the damage or decay or just to leave it like that 
and say that okay let it be. Now, what uh, Vishwarathi authority or Shantiniketan did is that they put up certain shelters or support or canopy on these structures, so that they do not get uh, eroded by rainwater and other things. There is a lot of opposition against that, because they are uh, some say that it is not very aesthetically pleasing, it is uh, not the original environment, but I think one has to take a decision. But in this case, what we see that it is actually without taking care of the structure itself or sculpture itself, it is trying to manage the environment which is causing damage to the sculpture or the structure itself. Uh, we will later on come to that what we the other alternative also has been adopted in that case, but that we will talk of later. So, this is one of the case of a minimum intervention and which we call the indirect conservation, because it is really not touching the sculpture itself and trying to prevent the process of deterioration and preventing the agents of decay and damage from becoming active, in this case mainly the rainwater. One can question that why not taking them inside the museum. In this case, we have to remember that the context is also very important, the site, the surrounding, uh, the nature, keeping them in the museum could have sort of saved those structure, but it would have lost its context and the surrounding. We will talk in the next example, we will talk about another example where this contextual or this importance of the surrounding to a structure is very important and we will see that how to maintain the relationship and how do we do the prevention of deterioration. This example is a very well known example because it is a world heritage site. It is Abraham Derby's blast furnace in Iron Museum, Colebrookdale in Shropshire in UK is here. Now, what is the importance of this? blast furnace. You can see that it is protected, the original blast furnace which is made of brick, it is protected by a very modern structure. This blast furnace actually indicates the start of the industrial revolution in coal brutal. The entire area, it is a 7 miles long area, the entire area is known as a Iron Bridge Gorge Museum, a world heritage site indicating the place where industrial revolution took its birth. And this is the blast furnace, which because Abraham Derby, they were a family of, uh, we are experimenting with the blast furnace, is the Abraham Derby the third, who actually, because of the smelting, mass scale melting of iron in this blast furnace, was able to build the iron bridge, which is still there, very close to this blast furnace. 1781, the first cast iron bridge he built because of the processing of the iron instead of coal, he used coke. And that is why the blast furnace, because of this technological process, it is very important. Now, being there like that, it was exposed to all the uh, damages and decays, and it would not have stayed. So, one could have taken the photograph and let it be like that. One could have again removed it, reconstructed it inside. But what, what the authority and the stakeholders and the experts thought that it is it has a relationship with the site and the surrounding and being very close to that cast iron bridge is very important. So, let it keep it like that and so cover it. So, they have covered it. There is a very interesting thing because this is the um, picture of the blast furnace where he perfected the smelting of iron with coke instead of charcoal in 1709 and when it is now protected and there is a sound and light show which goes on and people come there and can know that what had happened, what is the significance of this uh, uh, blast furnace. And this is the what we talk about the preventive measures. So, what we have seen in this example is that this indirect control or conservation uh, means prevention of deterioration. It can have the various depending on the case, depending on the artifact, depending on the structure and its nature, the material. It can has to take care of what are the major causes of decay and damage. One has to understand that and then one has to take prevention or uh, preventive measures. So, it can be the control of the humidity and the temperature. 
like in this case we see that it is the humidity and the water seepage which is really causing is one of the temple in Bengal where the humidity and the seepage actually is creating the problem and which lead to further structural problem. Then measures to prevent fire, arson, theft, vandalism, you can see that even man made causes are very, uh, very significant because uh, in this case if you see that it is just pure vandalism which is causing the damage of this property. How do we take care of that? This is also very important. It can be the fire, it can be the theft, there are many many cases. So, one has to understand how to prevent such uh, damage or decay. Then Third is the provide for cleaning and good overall housekeeping. So, this housekeeping is very important, the regular maintenance to understand because every fabric, the building tell its own story. It shows that there is a process of decay, it does not happen suddenly and so it sort of gradually builds up and one day. So, if there is a good housekeeping, then many, many of the later damages and decay can be prevented very well. There can be measure to reduce both atmospheric pollution and traffic vibration. This is also very important uh, examples. This is Stonehenge, which is again a world heritage site. There has been a highway which is very close to the site, and this highway is causing vibration and it is uh, creating problem of the visibility. Uh, of the temperature, the environment, overall environmental thing and there is also archaeological remains. So, there has been a great movement and the, now this road has been shifted, this highway has been shifted away from the uh, Stonehenge which is a world heritage site. So, there are measures which can be taken which we can uh, if we try to understand that what are the causes and others. So, all these things actually come under the uh, first step that is indirect conservation and prevention of deterioration. Control of water again is in various form is very uh, important to understand because in many cases the control of ground subsidence caused by let us say obstruction of water uh, because many many structures could have sort of uh, been there where uh, initially there was no human settlement maybe outside and because of the increase in the density and the extraction of water from the uh, ground, um, it many times causes a change in the substrata water level and which may cause a problem later on. So, one has to see that how to take care of. So, this first day talks about regular inspection, the maintenance, cleaning schedules, good housekeeping and proper management. For example, this is again it is not a listed structure, it is a a um, small temple, a household temple near Bakura in Vishnupur uh, or Vishnupur in Bakura sorry. And then if you can see that it is very unique because uh, not because of um, because of the style there are many such temples there, uh, it actually a Girigobodan temple. So, what the artist thought that they actually made the clay look like stones and they made it look like a hillock and it is quite unique in its uh, sort of a conception, uh, conception, the design and the structure. Now, you see that the minimum things, the, uh, the trees are coming up and which uh, I mean uh, because of this um, uh, rain water and the uh, monsoon climate, so these trees are coming up and so these actually they are allowed to remain like that they will grow and cause a further damage to there. So, this regular inspection could have saved uh, or could prevent the damage and decay of this temple. So, this is what we call a good housekeeping of the structures. But so, once we are talking about this measure we should understand that what we are talking about is controlling the environment the agents which can cause a damage to the structure and so the maintenance is very important part of that. At the Bara Charter, the Australian e-commerce charter for the places of cultural significance, how it defines maintenance is the continuous protective care of a place and its setting. So, the setting is also very important and the maintenance is to be distinguished from a repair and which involves the restoration or reconstruction. So, here maintenance is not 
reconstruction or restoration these two are very different things. So, when he was talking about mountain like again this is a very small temple we see that there are it is not has it has not been restored or it has not been reconstructed, but it is simple cleaning process which is very different from the earlier temple what we have seen that its setting has been clean the the bricks have been cleaned some pointing has been done something just minimum maintenance has been done and that is why this temple is likely to survive for a longer period. Now, let us talk about the next stage which is the preservation. Now, preservation which is different from the first uh, indirect uh, conservation. Preservation means maintaining a place in its existing state and retarding the deterioration. So, it is maintaining a place in its existing state this is very important to understand and retarding the deterioration. So, it is actually directly deals with the cultural property. Let us take this example this is Pompeii in Italy you know this again a world heritage site very important because uh, it was uh, it got devastated by an earthquake and the entire city got buried under the ashes of the volcano and this has been taken and we have can go to that city and see what it was like. In this case what you can see that this colonnade which was there on the side of the road and here you can see that the plasters which are original plaster they have been kept like that where the plasters were not there they have been just the big bricks have been exposed and only that portion of the colonnade which has been there they are kept no rest restoration no reconstruction nothing has been done whatever has been remaining they have been preserved in its original existing state. So, this is a different now uh, of course, the taking care of the environmental and causes of decay and damage is also has to be understood, but here we are actually directly dealing with the cultural property. So, preservation deals directly with the cultural property and repairs must be carried out when necessary to prevent further decay. So, in this case definitely this brick which is an exposed brick and very difficult to maintain that some sort of uh, repair must have been done to keep it like that, but not plastering. So, it is the minimum intervention which has been done so that it can remain or it continues to remain in its existing state. So, these are very important to understand. Uh, we will now talk about another case which is very uh, even now we are talking very recently this has been this has come up in the newspaper of Taj Mahal. A world hit is sites people from all over the world come to see this Taj Mahal and it is very close to our heart also. Now, we know that it is a long is a long story because for years for decades uh, we know that how the Taj Mahal has been affected by the pollution uh, and there are some damages which are causing the main damage which is can see that pollution is just a the article which has published the po 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 pollution turning Taj Mahal yellow. So, some study has been done. So, the original color of the marble is getting lost because of the pollution factor. So, on one hand there are different measures which has been taken by um, yeah, Agra uh, the authority and uh, the state government and ASI to take care that the how the pollution level can be reduced whether they are trying to not to allow the cars in the near vicinity and also they are trying to see that if there are the motor refinery case is very important to prevent those refinery to be there or to say that they do not the smoke uh, is not so uh, does not have that much of pollutant which is uh, damaging the marble. But now the problem has already happened that the marble is becoming yellow. So, what to do about that this there what we call about the preservation. So, let us see what is done the Taj is changing color due to deposition of dust this is one because and other carbon containing particles emitted in the burning of fossil fuels biomass and garbage. So, these are the major causes which is causing the discoloration of the marble of Taj Mahal. So, what has been done is that uh, there is a facelift it and slaps on a mud pack. 
So, what is a mud mac? It is almost a fuller's earth which they call it and this treatment consists of applying the fuller earth to the entire structure of the Taj and these sort of put in different uh, sort of uh, uh, different portions one by one that is being applied and then the clay forms a thick paste and that absorb the dirt, grease and the animal droppings and is washed off with distilled water leaving the surface relatively pristine. So, here we are not really changing the marble or because it is discolored we are trying to clean it by applying something externally. So, we must understand this uh, difference. We are now directly dealing with the cultural property apart from trying to remove or mitigate the causes which are colluding, uh, which are causing this pollution or causing this problem. So, these are the things which are very important to understand. So, preservation we have to understand it is the damage and decay caused by we have to understand water in all its form, what are the problem as we can see the it can be the, uh, the rain water, the ground water, the seepage, many types of water problem, the snow um, water in various forms can cause the problem. Uh, as we can see the it is the, um, the seepage and also the ground water uh, rising dampness is causing the problem to this structure because of that there is a moss and fungus. The chemical agents may cause as we have seen in the case of Taj Mahal and all types of microorganism and there are so many varieties of microorganism the fungus, the lichens and algae there are different types and different types of these microorganism have a different relationship with the different material. So, one has to understand with the proper experts that what are the problem and has to take and there also that there are the different environmental condition which enhance or which sort of uh, retard the growth of this microorganism. So, it is very important to understand that what are these causes, it is there is a brick and you can see the different types of fungus uh, which has grown on the brick and this has to be cleaned. So, this must be stopped in order to preserve the structure. So, preservation is that it can involve cleaning, it can involve some sort of a treatment as we can see in Taj Mahal's case, but it has to be major objective is to keep it in the existing state. I uh, will just give that always Taj Mahal is not that we are concerned about, there are also everyday structures which are also which are important and which are important. So, I am just talking about one of the structure uh, which is a family uh, place of worship in East Midnapur, uh, Kelamal Ghoshbari. Uh, is more than 100 years old and there is the place where it if you see that what what it was before and now because of the direct participation of the owner is an also an architect uh, Indrani and Sikumar Ghosh the owners have taken care to preserve it in the existing state and done the minimal in intervention and they still continue to celebrate all the festivals in that. So, this is what we call it the preservation, the second stage where we are directly dealing with the cultural property and trying to understand what causes the damage and decay and if required it has to be cleaned, the minimum repair, minimum intervention it can be maintained and it can continue to uh, leave his life and extend his life. So, this is what we call the second stage the preservation. Thank you. We will later on uh, in the next stage we will call that what happens when you go we have to do something where it is not enough to just talk about the external treatment we have to talk something about or we have to intervene within the structure. So, that will be the third stage of the uh, these uh, intervention measures and we will talk about that in our next lecture. Thank you.